So here I have two different item types. I have range weapons, which I really need to pause my game. So I have nothing equipped. Now I have something equipped. Range weapons, I throw a knife. Melee weapon, I don't throw a knife. Uh, so the, the, the knife is ranged, the axe is melee, okay? So those are actually different object types. If I show you my item hierarchy, everything derives from inst item instance, and, and every scriptable object used to create those items derives from item. Uh, but in my inventory, uh, it goes item, then equipment derives from item, and then weapon derives from equipment. You can see this here, so equipment from item instance weapon instance from equipment instance, and then weapon melee derives from weapon instance, and weapon ranged derives from weapon instance. So I actually have a polymorphic hierarchy rolling all the way back up to item instance. If I look at my player inventory, I'm only tracking on the model behavior item instance. Now, during runtime, these instances or these objects actually maintain their own uh, attributes and, and whatnot. Um, you know, I'm not going to suddenly, because I've decided to add a weapon to an item instance list, I'm not going to lose the weapon attributes. The trouble comes in when you try to serialize or deserialize from that object. Um, you actually end up, when you serialize a full item instance list, it serializes everything as the lowest common denominator, the top of the hierarchy, the item instance object, which not usually ideal. So the way that this works is I have a data manager that is listening for any time my uh, inventory changes. And so in here, uh, whenever my inventory changes, I call save game data. And so what I first do is I call update game, da game data and I grab my level for my player. I get my um, inventory for my player, which is a static instance. Um, and I actually grab all the items from my player's inventory and set them into an item uh, or into an object called the game data .item instance. And what that is, is we'll get into that. That's where the bread and butter is. That's all you need to do is create this class down here, by the way, in order to make this work beautifully. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. And uh, if you're really anxious to see it all, you can just go right to the code. Um, but uh, what I do is I grab the items from the player's inventory. I set it to the game data object. And then I also say, hey, what is currently equipped? And I add that to the game data object as well. Uh, but when I go to save, standard JSON utility. JSON utility dot to JSON, convert my game data object pretty print equals true, and then save it to file. And then, so let's actually look at what happens in the serialization callback receiver uh, component of this item instances class, which all this is, is um, it's kind of a, a wrapper or a package that holds uh, my item instances. So normally my player inventory just has a list of item instances. That's it. This doesn't serialize well when you're talking about polymorphism. A list of uh, derived classes, you can't serialize those because when you deserialize back out, you don't really know what type of class to deserialize it back to. And additionally, when you serialize down the file, it doesn't really know what kind of class to serialize it down to either. So as a part of this data manager, I actually explicitly say, hey, I know that I have a list of items, but I'm not gonna serialize that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I wanna serialize uh, both my item type and my serialized items. And these fields don't actually exist yet. They're just uh, fields that I'm gonna set as a part of my, um, my serialization. But uh, basically whenever I call save game data, before it actually tries to write my uh, item instances to file, what I do is I go grab all my serialized items. So I go through and I iterate through this list of all of my items. And well, first of course I create two lists. They're both string lists but I iterate through all of my items that I have on my player inventory, and I actually go ahead and I convert each individual item to a serialized object. So I, I use the JSON utility to JSON, and one item at a time, I serialize it. And then I add it to my list of strings that are serialized items. And then in parallel, I take each item, I get its type, and I store that type string to a parallel list. Now, the reason why I do this in parallel is because you can't serialize a dictionary easily. Uh, but because I'm actually iterating through this, uh, whenever I add to one list, I add to the other. And so both of these lists are gonna share the same uh, iterative key. If I'm at, if I'm at uh, key value zero, the serialized item at zero is going to line up exactly one-to-one -one with this, the item type at, at zero. So if I were to deserialize, uh, the first one, I know exactly what type to deserialize it to, and that's exactly what we do in the deserialization. Um, when I, after I deserialize, all I have is these two strings, they're lists, 
Um, and what I do is I iterate through one string to serialize items, and I go and I get the type from the other list, and I just cast that item as that type. And then I add it back. Uh, I do do an explicit cast to item instance. However, if I've casted it to this item type, it'll actually be a derived type of that, and so that won't actually remove any data. Um, and so all this does is it basically says, hey, I have all of these item types. So say, for example, I have throwing knife. The first one of my serialized items is a weapon ranged instance. The second one is an ax. That's a weapon melee instance. And you can see in here, for each individual serialized item type, I have serialized, I, ha I have item instance specific values. A weapon melee type all is the only type of, of item that can have a melee length field. And of course, these are made up fields right now for, for testing and proving this out. But an arranged type is the only type of instance that can have a ranged value. Um, and so this is something that I find very valuable uh, because now what I can do is I can basically take all of my different item instances. I can take my armor, I can take my pants, my, my jewelry, um, any type of weapons, and I can extend that infinitely. And I no longer need to go out and make sure I explicitly define a way to serialize this. Because I'm serializing this as a string uh, and it's typed separately, I can always deserialize it back no problem. Now, a lot of people will go, well, hey, you're serializing a serialized version of this value. Yes, yes, I am. So uh, this is the one snafu you're going to run into. When you go in and you serialize your, uh, your items one by one, here I already have a string. I already have a JSON string for each individual item that when I actually go out and I serialize this full uh, list of serialized items, I'm actually serializing a serialized string, which is why you see uh, these escape values and, and it's all on one line instead of pretty printed. It's because this in itself is actually a serialized value. So um, what you'll end up running into is you're just going to see some kind of less than pretty things to read. It's not going to be as readable as it would be, say, for example, in a database or if it was just one giant pretty print JSON. But you don't need to worry about data fidelity or data integrity because uh, it does properly escape all your string characters. So you're not going to end up seeing JSON values, jumping lines, or, or things bleeding across each other, as far as I'm concerned. And don't hold me to that. I can't promise anything. Uh, but that's this. So that's how you can get a polymorphic um, inventory, or basically a polymorphic system uh, serialized without having to do some weird snafu stuff or a lot of static values that you have to set outside of your actual game. Uh, the beauty of this is... All I had to do was create the serial, serializable class. Nothing else needs to change. And so um, that was so simple for me and I, I nearly cried when I discovered that. But let's talk about um, this other component of this script or this, um, I guess, item, uh, item system that I built here, inventory system, there we go. Uh, and it's based on the idea of scriptable objects being used to generate these items. So each item uh, it derives from a scriptable object. So, I, kind of. So, item derives from a scriptable object, and then equipment has a, a scriptable object type that derives from item, and then same, same forth. There's a scriptable object item, and there's an instance item. One of them derives from a Unity uh, runtime object, kind of a runtime object. Scriptable objects aren't runtime objects, they're configurable data objects. But the reason why I actually create a separate instance of the scriptable object is one, the scriptable object acts as a template. It's not actually like I can create five of the exact same scriptable object and use those across the board. The scriptable object kind of acts as a singleton. Unless I instance new ones, I can't use this individual scriptable object as an inventory item. So what I actually do is whenever I, um, whenever I have a scriptable object in game, so for example here I have a loot item uh, that has the axe scriptable object, it's a weapon melee. Um, and I, whenever I have that in game, so if I go to weapon melee, if I step over that object, it calls this method add to inventory, and all that does is it actually creates a new melee instance based off of this scriptable object's uh, values, which will roll up the weapon, which will roll up the equipment, all that item. So what that does is it creates this instance, which then stores its values and makes it easier later on to, to deserialize, yada, yada, yada. But uh, what is important here is I don't want to lose that connection to the scriptable object. You cannot serialize a reference to a scriptable object. And the reason for that is if you rebuild your project, your scriptable object ref uh, instance IDs, let me show you what I'm talking about because I don't know if this is going to make sense to some. 
so if I go to my templates and I actually convert this to a debug, you notice this instance ID is 16.364. If I were to rebuild my project or exit Unity and re reopen it, or if I were to uh, you know, recompile everything or change versions or a million different things, this instance ID could change. I cannot reliably reference this instance ID across all of my environments. Um, now, of course, I can kind of, if I keep my environment running, um, if I, you know, once I've compiled it and I'm running it constantly, I can keep referencing this ongoing throughout runtime, but as soon as runtime ends, I'm not guaranteed that this is gonna stay the same. So in order to circumvent that, as a part of my data manager, first, whenever I create an instance uh, as a part of its constructor, I set the template name on it. So all the way back up on the item class, there's a template name string. And I explicitly say, don't serialize the item because it's not really valuable. You're serializing that instance ID. That's all that gets serialized and that can change. Uh, so if I actually remove this and rerun the script, or I rerun my game here, if I, re if I remove that, restart this and, and run it, I can show you what I mean. So if I swap that out and I go here, notice here how there's an instance ID. These instance IDs are not uh, reliable. Uh, you take my word for it, try it out if you want to, but um, that's why I explicitly say don't, don't rely on those to link back. But what I do is I, I grab the template name. So this, uh, it's all it is is a scriptable object name. This template name equals the scriptable object that's used to create it, which is this, its name. So in, in this actual um, example, I have an ax, its name is ax, uh, so when I actually go ahead and I create the instance of it, it has a template name of X. And you can see that in here, template name X. Well, when I go to the data manager and I uh, try to load from file, I'm not going to be able to hook directly into that scriptable object. But what I can do is I can create a dictionary ahead of time. So what I do is I find all objects of type item, which what that does is it finds all objects that are of type item and then those that derive down. So you have item and equipment and weapon and weapon melee, yada, 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 yada. Uh, and I create a dictionary of it. So I get an array of all of the items and I go through and I create a new dictionary and for each item in that array, I add that item to that dictionary with its key of its name. So now I have a key in my dictionary that says X is equal to this reference to a scriptable object. And so now when I'm loading from file, I can iterate through my item instances that look like this. I can see that this X template name exists. I can go to my dictionary, try to get to the template name, and then as a part of this item instance, I can actually try and replace that item reference. And so if we go back here uh, to item, even though it's not serialized, when I load from the, uh, the disk, or when I load from memory, I am actually trying uh, to to find that object in the dictionary. If somebody deletes the scriptable object, like say for example, if I were to delete this ax object, it wouldn't marry it properly and I would run into issues. But um, this is the same for sprites. This is the same for uh, any mono behaviors. So typically what I like to do, uh, rather than having to do this same logic, you know, save sprite name, save resource names, everything else, I like to put everything that can be instanced, anything that's a Unity object that, that changes its instance ID on runtime, I like to put those in scriptable objects. So you see here on my item, I have the sprite. And in that scriptable object, I can then reference that later on because once I made the connection between this instance and this object, I don't need to worry about whether or not I have the sprite linked or not because as a part of my compilation or as a part of my build, it's already linking that together. I, I hope that made sense. I've kind of covered two things here. One would be how to link back to a scriptable object um, from serialized objects, and two, how to serialize polymorphic objects, uh, or polymorphic inventory systems, or really anything that's polymorphic in general. I, I hope it wasn't too wordy. This is a one-take wonder. Um, I, I Let me know if there's anything that needs clarification. Again, if you're interested in uh, seeing how this project works, or trying it out yourself, uh, you're welcome to. It is online uh, on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below. Of course it's online, I, it's late, forgive me. But uh, it's on GitHub, uh, it's open source. You're welcome to use it as you like, no attribution required. I'm trying to build this with as many public domain objects, as many pub public domain art and scripts as possible so that um, you don't need to worry about attribution or any legal commercial yada yada yada. Um, that being said, if you like this video and you want more, Give me, give me some information back. 
let me know that it's not going to waste. Um, but I'll see you guys later. Bye.